Welcome to Love and Rage, a podcast from Extinction Rebellion NYC. Extinction Rebellion is a movement to protect all life, because all life is threatened by the climate and ecological emergency. Here in New York City, life has shifted dramatically in the past few weeks. The coronavirus pandemic has changed the way we eat, travel, exercise, and work. Not to mention the way that we organize. Our hearts go out to the families who have lost loved ones and to the healthcare workers who are fighting so hard despite not having adequate resources. And we really find ourselves in a moment of reflection. We're taking this time to slow down and process what's going on around us, to feel deeply about our current moment. What you're about to hear are some of those reflections from various members of Extinction Rebellion NYC. As we act today, may we find the courage to bring this sense of peace and appreciation to everyone we encounter, to every word we speak, and to every action we make. In this emergency, together, rooted in love, we are all we need. We need to be outraged right now. It's part of how I've been feeling, outraged at the response of our government. This virus has caused the unveiling of so many systems that we are in that just that we just take for granted. Mm-hmm. And so I know that being angry gives me lots of energy. So <laughs> that's really so good. That's where, that's where I am at this moment. It'll mm-hmm. change in a little while, but that's where I am now. Each week is very different from the first one was more like we can do this and sort of shock and starting to, you know, really take stuff in. But this week is much more beginning to mourn and, you know, ex- really accept what this really is. I mean, there's many more layers of it. So. But anyway, so I'm just, I'm emotionally quite full of, of a lot of, a lot of other people's emotions, including my own. So that's where I am. Uh, I found out Monday night, one of my dearest uh, and oldest friends uh, who's 84, was hospitalized over the weekend with COVID. She's a survivor of uh, lung cancer. And I just, I really got scared for her. I thought this, this is it. I'm going to lose somebody close to me this week. And as it turned out, she got better and she went home yesterday, which is really pretty extraordinary. Uh, So that gives me hope uh, a little bit, but I still feel like there's this slow motion tsunami uh, that's heading our way. And in, in, in the pleasantness of my hour to hour surroundings here in my little, little cave uh, with my partner, I feel like I'm, I'm kind of not really prepared for what may come. I can see the Javits Center from my window, and I think about how can I go over there and offer some kind of help. Just feeling, oh, I could, I could do this for a while, you know? Being home is not that bad. And at the same time, just feeling like, I just need to go out. I just need to, you know, hug people, like be in the same room. And um, I... I'm starting to get sick of Zoom <laughs> at this point. I've had so many Zoom meetings <laughs> today. So yeah, taking it one day at a time, being like, okay, we can do this, we can do this. And at the same time being like, oh my God, but do we want to do this? Like, it's just, it's, it's just so heavy. Mm-hmm. Um, it's doable, but it's heavy. I'm feeling a weird m- m- a sense of t- closeness despite our distance and a sense in which the um, kind of the illusions of the institutions we were all grown up assuming would save us are no longer working and that's very visible to everybody. Um, It feels enormously both validating and terrifying at the same time. And I'm trying to turn those feelings not into vindication but into solidarity. And right now that means sitting on a call with you all which is great and in the rest of my life it's trying to manage the pendulum swing between concrete tasks and existential dread. (laughs) I think we need to reframe ourselves around the fact that we are not going back to what we know is normal. And we need to realize that 
it's a whole new world that many, many people are going to be completely bankrupt very mm -hmm. soon and will be losing their homes and the economy will be a complete disaster, especially in the U.S. First of all, to just highlight the abject failure of the government to protect us, I think there's never been a, a, a more striking example of that. And that's that's maybe the, the strongest parallel to the climate and ecological crisis. This pandemic is a great example of uh, what happens when you don't listen to scientists and you don't react in time. You don't act quickly enough. And who wants to read about how the U.S. now has the most cases in the world of any country versus like, like grief. I saw some article today about how, you know, someone talked about how dealing with climate grief has helped them with coronavirus. Like we are watching collectively the entire world face grief and face emotions at the same exact time that, you know, you can't ignore it. It's not like climate change where it's like, well, it's not affecting me right now. This is literally just smashing every single human in the face. I'm also worried a great deal about the government overextending its powers in a time like this and taking advantage. I've sort of recently tuned out of like keeping up with the most recent uh, updates on the news. So, I mean, I think it was just so negative, like cases rising, like these pictures and running, hearing that hospitals are running out of supplies and I wasn't feeling like that was helping me in any sort of way. So I've sort of just tried to control what I can control in my immediate life, which is like my relationships with my family and kind of how I'm taking care of myself. So I've been doing pretty well, all things considered, but definitely in the back of my head, I kind of have that cloud of knowing that um, the U.S. is kind of going to be going through a really hard period for the next few months. I mean, I, the pictures out of Italy and China were just so heartbreaking. Um, and I'm going to be, it's going to be heartbreaking to see that if that does happen in America, like hospitals being overrun. And I'm just dreading the moment that I see like the first video of like an overrun hospital where people are like collapsing or something like that. So um, I just I feel so sorry for everyone who is going to have to go through that. And fingers crossed, it's not anybody I know in my direct family. I do have a sense of people feeling anxious, but also um, hopeful at the same time. It's a strange mixture of energies. I, I just have this sense that everyone's in the world is thinking about the same thing, which is a strangely fascinating, unifying and scary feeling. I work in the hospital on Mount Sinai. So for me, it's been a bit hectic. Um, there's so much information. I actually work with viruses and my vi virologist. Um, so we are in constant communication with the hospital. They, they sent us home uh, for two months, but still we are working at home and we are volunteering also to do the tests and all those things. Um, at home, uh, it feels like, feels like I should be doing more uh, that I am doing but in a way there's not much more that you can do um than what you're already doing basically i think the best thing everybody can do is just staying at home what are the connections what are the things that this crisis is revealing that are also going to be true with the climate crisis you know if we could go back and tell ourselves six months ago about this crisis what would we want to know i think it's inevitable that at some point in the future, this isn't going to be the last kind of major thing that happens in New York or across the U.S. And to sort of have a plan or like book or set of steps that you can refer to to kind of deal with the situation um, and not be so like blindsided by it would be uh, something great. Um talking about how the government has failed us, really pointing out the flaws and then giving people a way to um, live differently and a way to resist in a new way. I think I've struggled with this because it's hard to um, tell what the world's gonna look like and what people's lives and what their capacity is gonna be once it's over. Like this, this is going to turn the world we're familiar with 
um, into something very different. There definitely was an agreed, an agreed awareness to be compassionate at this time when so many are suffering. Um, but there was a good sense from the group to really push hard now in a sense and telling the truth. And um, I might be speaking for myself, but I would like to co-opt the whole phrase, flatten the curve to our own needs. To me, there is no co-opting because this is uh, a symptom of climate crisis, pandemic. So it's, I don't know that we can back away from what we do well, which is to tell the truth and we're aware that that messaging will be difficult for people to hear and that perhaps people won't like it, but not often are activists. I think we kind of all agreed on leading with COVID and saving lives as that's the primary crisis right now, but that crisis holds like a common thread of injustice. And that's something that is important with the climate crisis. But I think it, we talked about how it can be dangerous to compare crises. Um, one isn't necessarily worse than the other. We've been completely outdone with disruption. So how can we contradict that with something more positive? Things like painting the streets and singing and projections. And creativity might be a really powerful weapon at the moment. And also sensitively trying to highlight the positives that have happened, letting people out of prison, clear skies, less pollution. Maybe we don't want things to go entirely back to normal once this is over. And how can we help people to envision a future? People themselves know what they need when they're given the opportunity to work together and how that could transfer to post COVID life. Yeah, a lot about keeping it positive and sensitive. I'm taking away a lot of gratitude and joy for seeing this uh, growing community. To creating a new normal, a totally new, beautiful normal with all of you. <laughs> Let's send our love out to all the people we just spent these hours with. All right, so everyone unmute. Thanks everyone. Everybody. Hi everybody. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. From Brownsville. Oh, hey, Brownville. Did you say? Bye. Bye. No. Bye. Excellent. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank This podcast has been a production of Extinction Rebellion New York City. We have no advertisers. We are volunteers fueled by love and rage. If you would like more information about Extinction Rebellion, please visit us online at xrebellion.nyc. That website address is also in the show notes for this episode. Thanks for listening and see you online until we can see you in the streets.